We're about to perform an exterior inspection of the building behind me, which was built using tilt slab or tilt up construction methods. There's a couple different methods that can be used. You can see the walls behind me. They're large concrete slabs that are actually precast, either off site and brought to the site to be placed onto a foundation, or they're precast on site and tilted up into their correct location. There's a couple things we want to look at with how they're connected and obviously the condition of them as we're performing a ComSOP inspection of exteriors, we're going to look at what it's made up of as well as the condition and if there are any things we need to report on and take photographs of. So come with me, we're going to go perform an exterior inspection of this warehouse. We're going to think of these walls and these panels as a system. All of these panels are individual, but when tilted up and put in place, they're connected and secured together to create an entire exterior watertight system. They have to be bracketed and sealed together in order to do that. In this case, we have an exposed bracket that we can see. This is a welded bracket. You could also have a bolted bracket. These aren't always visible to the inspector or accessible. In this case, they are, and they are exposed to the elements. So you want to notate that you see some rust and corrosion on these brackets because they could fail over time. You're also, part of the system is, like I said, weatherproofing and sealant. You're going to see sealant at the butt joints of any of these, uh, any of these walls where they come together. That sealant will deteriorate over time and is, as a maintenance item would need to be repaired or corrected. Let's take a look at what else we can see as far as these seams and these brackets and see uh, what else we can find. Looking at this tilt-up slab as a system, you're going to have two panels right here put together and where they join, where they become one, is going to need to be sealed. You can see they use some sealant and it looks pretty nice right here. Maybe a little bit of small cracking. We have some maybe uh, some moisture getting into this wall assembly and you can see it's causing a little bit of deterioration. You can also see moisture being sprayed from the nearby landscape. These are all things we would want to notate in our report. We also have behind me an even larger repair where it looks like possibly a whole panel, which can happen, can even settle or move slightly. So when I'm performing this inspection, I would want to get up to these panels and look up and down them and look for trueness, look for plumbness. And that's something you'd want to do. As I'm finding small hairline shrinkage cracks, you can notate those, but this is not a, it's not a defect of this system. This would be a common finding and something that could be maintained. Let's see what else we can find while looking at these panels. Specifically with this inspection, but really any exterior inspection, it's important to think about plumb, level, square, and straight. And it's really easy. It's not hard to do. You walk up to it and you look. Is it nice and plumb? We're, we're visual, we're generalists, and we're visual inspectors. What are we seeing? We're going to look at square when we get to the corners. We can look at uh, plumbness also if we see any reveals like a V or a heave or anything like that where these are connected. Those are types of things we want to be looking for in any exterior inspection, but especially with these types of panels because a single panel could move independently of the other. So just like a concrete slab on the ground in a horizontal plane, this is going to crack the same way. And in this case, we have some small hairline shrinkage cracking. This isn't going to be a structural crack or one that we would make a big deal about. But we are going to notate that we have some maybe uh, in various areas around here. And again, we don't report on causation, but we can use our brains and see that we have some moisture being sprayed from these sprinkler systems up onto this wall, causing some damage to the window, causing some, some shrinkage cracks here. Concrete is more like a sponge than people think. So it accepts water into it, and that water has to dry and work its way out as well. If that process happens fast, like in the dry, arid, arid climate that we're in, it will cause more of these shrinkage cracks around the slab. It could also happen during the curing process, and this could have been here for years. Either way, this would be a maintenance item that we would recommend some maintenance in this area to prevent further moisture intrusion, further widening of the crack and cracks, or any issues like that. We've been talking about precast panels being tilt up. There's also precast columns. 
And this column is a structural member suspending and, and bearing and bearing the above load of this precast panel above. Now, I'm noticing some pretty good size cracking. This is wider than we would normally see. We've talked about shrinkage cracks. This is a large crack. This is a wide crack. So, what first thing I would do is again, true plumb level. I'm looking up and I'm seeing with my naked eye, as a generalist, I see this looks like it's in good shape. It looks like we're not having twisting or leaning or anything that would cause an end bearing issue. But we do have a, a fairly good sized crack and we should note that in our report and we should make our client aware for at least monitoring, if not further evaluation by a specialty consultant. If this was out of plumb, out of level, out of square, twisting, any structural issue with this as you're visualizing this, that would be, you would definitely want to recommend a specialty consultant to come in to and further evaluate this and provide cost to cure, cost to repair, and what's, what else would be involved. With a warehouse, we're probably gonna have some type of receiving bay or dock, and we have large trucks pulling in and out of this area, right? I like that we have a bollard here to protect the structural element here of this precast column, but we are seeing some damage here. So again, while inspecting, we look up, we see, is this caused any type of structural issue? Is this just caused some cosmetic damage here? which we're not super worried about. We still would maybe notate that it's there, that it's happening. We like that the bollards here, but again, we're worried about, has this actually caused some type of structural concern in this area? And from what we're seeing, we don't think so. But that would be something you would definitely want to see if any mechanical damage is caused, what else? What else was caused because of it? We've defined a few different types of cracks, but we found another one. And in this case, you can see behind me almost a grid pattern of cracking in the wall assembly. Now we're viewing it from the interior. We don't have paint or anything from the exterior that's limiting our, our inspection ability. In this case, we can see everything that's going on and we see almost a grid, okay? What that's gonna be called is reflective crack. And what that's doing is it's actually showing where the actual rebar or structure steel, whatever they used, the steel inside the panel, is actually showing itself through. That could be because moisture is getting into the system, starting to rust and expand the structure. We don't know. But we wanna notate we're seeing some reflective cracking. This would be a common thing. This is more of a, a maintenance item that we would call out and say that, hey, we observe this, monitor it. So we've gone over the construction methods of tilt-up slab construction. We've gone over what types of things to look for as we're inspecting from the exterior and the interior. We've talked about different cracks and defects we're gonna find. But I wanna just again point out how this system is connected. You can see a nice seam there, doesn't have any large separations. It's nice and true and even. And we have a nice bracket at the top holding that together. And that'd be a welded bracket. Again, we could also have bolted. Take a look at those brackets, take a look at the seams, Make note of any cracks, especially large ones. And this would be how we perform inspection on a tilt-up slab building.